I measure the outside of the wheel and I'm going to leave an inch and a half between the core box and the actual part then it's done. This gives us 16 inches on the inside either way. And then we have an overlap joint that we'll have to take into account. For this job I'm going to cut out four boards at 17 and four at 18. The reason for the difference is because of the overlap and you'll see as the overlap comes there'll be an inch on either side of that overlap. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take roughly an eighth of an inch off just to make sure that the boards are nice and even on one side. This will be the lift that's going to sit together mating or the top of the silk and drag. Next you'll have to slide your fence over. This is probably about an eighth of an inch. We don't want to waste too much wood. Remember, like I said, we want to be able to use this for later for other projects to give us that depth. Now the overlapping joint is important, so I want to give it about a half inch of an overlap, so we've got to take that into account. Now the way I'm using the table saw here is less than ideal, so I, I don't necessarily recommend doing that. If, if you can find a better way, maybe post it in the comments down below. And let me know what you think. There's a lot of resistance to pushing that through here, and I was quite concerned about stick back on this. Just remember when you flip it around, you get it on the same side. Easy mistake to make, that'll throw your box out. Last part of cutting the notch out here, we're just going to slide the fence over. We're going to cut that little notch out and make this square. Now when I run this through, I'm going to create a bit of a safety concern as you're going to see here. So just be mindful if you're doing this. You might want to put a little bridge on the fence so it doesn't uh, create a kickback situation like that. Now for the fun part. Really, all we have to do is make sure it's square and that the two mating surfaces are going to mate up nice and flat. Now, this box is going to be exposed to the elements, so I really suggest a good quality all weather glue. And you make sure you get lots of glue in the joints as well as a couple of screws. Now I felt it really important to pre-drill my holes before I threw screws in as it's going to split the wood if I don't and I want this box to last quite a while. And as you can imagine we just complete this process around every corner making sure that we get them all nice and done. The final part of this is we're going to measure corner to corner to make sure that it's square. And I'll end up sticking a clamp on here just to bring it in that eighth of an inch it was out. And then I'd let it sit overnight so the glue would set up and I'd hold it in place. Now I'm going to throw down some cardboard so it doesn't glue to the other box. And all I got to do is, I don't even need to make sure it's square. All I gotta do is make sure that it matches the other box, and I'll put a witness mark somewhere on the box so we can come back to it later, just in case I get turned around. Now I'm gonna put the ribs on the inside. I found some scrap wood that conveniently would work for this process and I just cut it to length. It doesn't have to be anything special really, so you're just going to make sure they all get to roughly the same height. The 
last but not least, we got to put the handles on. The handles aren't necessarily just handles. They're going to facilitate alignment as well. And you'll see as that rolls out. Now this is going to be really important that this stays on here and doesn't move around ever. So we want to make sure you put a couple screws in it and glue it on really good. Now if you look underneath, I have a 8 inch spacer. This is going to bring it up so the two surfaces don't drag later. And this is important because if you get a bit of sand in that surface, it's going to lift it up a little bit extra and you don't want that. Now, for one reason or another, I had a wobble in the box. It's pretty easy. You're going to find your low spot and then find your high spot. And you just got to shave off the hand plane, all the high spots. Lucky for me, I've got a junk drawer specifically for handles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a drill bit that's really, really close to that size. Now, I've gone with the exact same size. It's going to drill 5 thou over. Off camera, I did test it to make sure that it was going to drill and work out right. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. I've got a couple other good videos coming down the pipe that I think you're really going to enjoy. Are you still here? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be part of this one, eh? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Son. Okay. <laughs> That's sharp, you be careful. Alright, here. Let's do let's do a YouTube video. You can stand there if you want. Uh camera's up there. We're just gonna look at the camera. You just kinda hang out. Don't make any funny faces either. <laughs> <laughs> Hey YouTube, the project of the weekend was making a cope and drag box. I got my apprentice here, he's been helping. Perfect. Hey, we got a cope and drag box. I made it out of maple. I went with one inch. <laughs> hey, I made it out of one inch, one inch maple. What are you looking at? Hey, that's bad TV. That's bad TV. You gotta look at the camera. All the YouTube videos I've watched. Uh, you gotta watch. It. You ready? <laughs> okay, one more time. Hey YouTube. Okay. Take two.